Okay, welcome back everyone to the Small Business Startup Kit. This is lesson seven. I'm your instructor, Art Morrison III, in case you forgot. And this particular course is a special one because from here, lesson seven, all the way to lesson 13, we're gonna be talking different subsidiaries of branding and marketing. So um, the, last, the last lesson we talked branding and marketing a little bit. This lesson we're gonna talk about, um, have GoDaddy on the board, but really we're just talking about all of your web services that you're gonna to need to start your website and begin to build an online presence. But um, in regards to branding and marketing, this next uh, six, no, this next seven lessons, including this one, are gonna be vital right, to your, the branding and marketing of your company, your business, or businesses if you have more than one, regardless of what industry you're in. We all need to have a domain name that points to our website that people can grow familiar with. We all need to have some sort of database where we can build an email list and market to that email list and grow an audience, right? We all are gonna need um, to have a, an email that people can contact us that is professional, right? Um, art at artmorrison3.com instead of, you know, artmorrison at gmail.com. Right, they speak volumes when you're handing out business cards and your business card, your email has your own domain, right? All these things are quite easy to do. I've learned over the years different places and different ways to, um, I guess, uh, I don't know, pull together web services. So for example, my email, I use through Gmail, Google G Suite used to be called, now I think it's just Google, Google Suite. Right, I, I use uh, HostGator for my hosting of my website. Um, but that's me, I'm a little tech savvy and I've been doing this for a while. Even before this, my original major in, in college was computer science, so I know how to navigate technology a little bit, but I know this isn't the case for everyone. So if that's the case for you, that's good. You can take this knowledge and then explore other options on your own. For me, the best um, way that I've found that people can um, leverage a little bit of knowledge they might have and still be able to have quality web services is through GoDaddy. Okay, what GoDaddy is, you may have heard of them. GoDaddy, they have um, some of those famous commercials, Super Bowl commercials, right? They, they are famous for investing a lot of money into advertising and marketing so that they can, again, grow as a business, right? So they have funny commercials. Back in the day, they used to have Danica Patrick in the commercials. Um, but anyway, GoDaddy is essentially a one-stop shop for web services. So when I was first getting started and before I had um, all this vast knowledge on technology and you know technology regarding business, I knew I can go to GoDaddy.com for a number of things. So I'm gonna list these things out and then I'm gonna share with you a tutorial of the back end of my GoDaddy account so you can see kind of what it's gonna look like as you build it and some of the features that you can use to grow your business. So the first thing and you guys can, I guess, write this down. The first thing that I used GoDaddy for ever was purchasing what's called a domain name. Your domain name is not your website. It's just the web address, okay? And even that's not the perfect term, the right term is domain name. And what a domain name is, it is, uh, you're essentially, yeah, I guess you could say for, for um, for, for an analogy, you can say it's an address. It's gonna be the location or where people can go and where you can go actually to access all your information. And we'll talk about hosting in a second. But right now from a domain name perspective, this is very important and here's why. Today in the 20th century or you know in the new millennium, we talk about trademarking, we talk about forming an LLC. If you purchase a domain name, you can get a domain for as cheap as $4.99 and as expensive as $10,000, depending on what it is, right? Um, when you purchase a domain name, you actually, it actually will hold up in court in regards to you trademarking that specific name. So if I have an online business where let's say I sell t-shirts and it's called artstshirts.com, right? And someone else starts a business called artstshirts.com but they don't get their domain name, they got a different domain name because I already purchased this domain name and it can only be used once. And we got in a dispute in court and um, there's, there's some times where my domain name will actually beat out a trademark because I had it first. So if someone goes and trademarks something that they know that I had first, um, you know, I, I would, 
I'm not saying I'm going to win in court, but I'm more likely to win in a court battle. Um, but if neither of us trademark and I have a dispute or I say, hey, they're using a name too similar to ours, I'm often gonna win that battle. I'm often gonna win that case all because I just took the step of purchasing a domain name, right? This is the power of the internet in today's age. And that's just something I learned from, from my attorney actually. So from a domain name perspective, this is important because like I said, there only can be one. So like I have above max bball.org for, and I, for uh, my youth basketball organization and I have .com and .net, right? I purchased all of them so no one else can use these different domain names and get it confused with my site and you know potentially tarnish my brand. For my real estate company, I have unitedhomerelief.com, right? It's very important that I have that because that matches now my email, info at unitedhomerelief.com. It matches my social medias, United Home Relief, you know, at United Home Relief. This is super important because it helps build your brand identity, trust. Uh, you know, imagine if Nike, for example, a big company like Nike had, you know, the company's name is Nike, the, uh, the sneakers say Nike on them, right? The store says Nike on them, but the domain name says bigcheck.com or bigswoosh.com because for some reason they couldn't get Nike, right? Uh, it would ultimately be difficult for people to search them. It would be tough, which we'll talk about later, to optimize their search engine optimization, right? How often they're seen in searches, um, which is all deep stuff we're gonna dive into in the, in the tutorial um, or in the screen share that we're gonna jump into for a second. But I just wanted to go through the outline of some of the things that we'll go over. So a domain name is really important. I always recommend that, again, we're only in lesson seven out of 15 lessons. No, I have 19 lessons, sheesh, 19. So we're only on lesson seven out of 19 lessons and we're already talking about a domain name. This is extremely important in today's age. Even if you don't have a website yet, purchase that domain name so you call dibs on it. No one else can buy it. Once you own it, they only can buy it from you and you can charge them whatever you want, which is why sometimes you look up a domain and it'll be extremely expensive because people actually buy and sell domains. You can flip domain names. If you come up with a good domain name, you don't even have a business for it. Like, I don't know. I'm looking at a carpet right now. If I buy the domain name carpetsoap.com, because I think one day someone's gonna need that. And I buy it right now for $8.99 because there's no company named Carpet Soap and nobody has that domain. Domain, And then someone launches a company named Carpet Soap and they need that domain desperately and they got the startup money to pay me a nice penny. That $8.99 domain name, I might be able to sell to someone for a thousand bucks because they desperately want that domain name. That's the power in domain name because there's power in the internet. The address that you have on the internet, there's power in that as well. So you want to go ahead and purchase your domain name. Uh, I often tell people when you're coming up with your name and bef you know, before you form your LLC or your whatever business you decide to form, I always like to tell people, make sure that the domain name and the social media names are available. This is super important because then you know that all your names are going to be uniform after you form your business. You won't have to have like, for example, United Home Relief is my company. You don't have to have United Home Relief 1 as your Instagram and then United Home Relief 24 as your Twitter because somebody had one and the regular one. And then United Home Relief uh, .net because somebody had .com, right? Like um, that research, if you do that research before you create your name, then you're gonna quickly see um, whether your name's available on all these platforms and if it's a good fit for that name. You might have to tweak your name a little bit um, in order to get the domain and the social media names that, that you ultimately want. So. You can go to godaddy.com, you'll see right in the top left, and I'll show you the tutorial. You can buy a domain name there. The next thing is gonna be web design. The domain name is great. The domain name is great, but the domain name does nothing. You could buy a domain name, and then if somebody goes to it, it's just gonna say there is no website here. So like you own that domain name, but there's nothing there. It's almost like owning an address and owning land, but there's no house. All right, so we want to build a beautiful house. And that's where web design comes in. GoDaddy has a couple options for web design. Um, you don't have to purchase web design or build a website through GoDaddy. You can use Wix, you can use Squarespace, you can use WordPress, right? But GoDaddy does have programs where they partner with these different platforms. I'm just gonna put a couple Wix. Squarespace, these are some of the most famous. 
but the most popular in the world, 70% of the internet uses this, and that's WordPress. All right, WordPress is an open source platform, which means people that are not associated with WordPress, the company, uh, can create plugins. And you can basically build a website based on plugins built by anyone. Because it's open source, that means there's endless options of what these websites can do. Squarespace and Wix often have limitations. WordPress does not have any limitations. So with that being said, GoDaddy has uh, programs where they actually partner with some of these companies, specifically WordPress, to where you can design a website through GoDaddy still, right? And they'll actually help you and walk you through it and offer services to keep it up and running all through GoDaddy. But you'll still get to use the WordPress. Um, they, I think they add a couple little limit, limitations depending on what package you buy. But my point is, you can design your website yourself easily using these three, or you can always hire a website designer or a web builder, which there is a difference. Um, the next one, we'll kind of skip past that because we'll get back to this. This is super important because your website, again, the internet is powerful. This is where people are gonna be going a lot. So like, I built my own website, my first two websites actually, and they were okay, they were pretty good, they lasted some time, but as we grew as a company and my brand grew, I knew I needed a professional look on my website, I knew that I couldn't just go with the homegrown, okay, I made this, I kind of clicked around and figured it out and it gets the job done and kind of um, piecemeal the website together. Last year, I started hiring people, professionals to design my website and all of them use WordPress. So I, I highly re recommend WordPress. All right, but these are good if you want to do them yourself. Depending on your business, you might not need a lot. For me, I wanted to sell clothes online. I wanted to have an online course like you're watching right now. I wanted to basically do everything online because I, I understand the power of the internet and I'm, I'm a millennial and all that good stuff. Um, so I needed to use WordPress. But if I had, let's say maybe a restaurant where I just wanted people to know where the restaurant was, what our menu looked like and put up some cool pictures of the restaurant, maybe I'll just use Squarespace or Wix or something where I know I can just upload photos and when you go to my website, it ain't gonna be blank. It's gonna be something good looking and aesthetic and make you like me and my brand more, all right? The next one and the last one we'll talk about is your email. Now, like I said earlier, actually we have two more, email and we have hosting. So for email, I talked about earlier, having an email that is connected to your domain name. Okay, so if your domain name is artmorrisonthe3rd.com, you want a professional email that you can put in your business card and hand out and email people from and to that says info or, um, you know, whatever it might be, contact at artmorrisonthe3rd.com, support at artmorrisonthe3rd.com. All right, so you want that domain to be shared so people don't have to remember so many different domains. It's very professional and it only costs on average about five bucks a month, excuse me. Let's be clear. Man, I didn't even put the five, I'm tripping. Five dollars a month for this email. Some different platforms are Google. That's the one I use. I use Google Suite. And I use this because it comes with Drive, Docs, Sheets, this is essentially Google's version of like Microsoft Word, right? Uh, Excel, Drive is, uh, you basically get a certain amount of storage where you can store documents and share documents. I think they give you uh, 30 gigabytes, but it's all well worth the $5 a month per user. So if I had 10 staff members, it cost me $50 a month. But uh, for the first couple years, it was just me. And this worked out nicely for me. The other one is Microsoft or MS Suite. And they basically come with a similar thing. It's just a different product. It's just Microsoft's version. I believe MS Suite is connected through GoDaddy. 
okay? Which is why I pointed you in the direction of GoDaddy is because it's a one-stop shop. Everything is there. Me, I actually piecemealed, I, I did Google Suite, which you're still able to connect them, but it's just a little more difficult. But I did Google Suite, this is what I like, and I'll show you the back end of that a little bit when we talk about our file systems. Okay, I went with WordPress, and I actually did the external version of WordPress. All right, um, my domain name, I went through GoDaddy. And then the last thing we wanna talk about is what's called, let's go over here so you guys can see, hosting. All right, what hosting is, is you're paying for space on a remote server, meaning someone else's storage. A server is just a big, it's like we have hard drives here. Companies have servers, which is just a system of massive hard drives that can store other people's data. So like iCloud or any other cloud services or things that you know we refer to as the cloud, that means they're somewhere else on another server right and then we access that information via the internet so what hosting is is we pay monthly or one-time fee for storage on a remote server all right when we do that that is where all of this stuff uh -oh, will be stored okay so godaddy provides hosting i actually use uh Host Gator, it's a little faster supposedly, and I actually have two websites. One uses Host Gator, my other website uses GoDaddy. It is my first website, because I just like everything uniform in one space. I can call a GoDaddy representative, they have pretty good customer service, and I can complain about every single one of these things and get help. I don't have to make multiple calls, right? That's just my reasoning, it makes it easier for me as a CEO and a businessman. But GoDaddy provides hosting and it saves all of your data. It saves all of your website information. So when you create a website, where do you think all of those pictures are stored, right? Where do you think all that information when somebody puts an email in or uh, all these plugins we talked about, all the functions of the website, where do you think all that is stored? All that is stored on a server somewhere, so you have to pay for that, it's not free, and that's called hosting. So all of this is gonna cost you money. Almost all of it comes with a free trial. So I recommend when you start your business, taking advantage of that free trial, figuring out what works best. But at the end of the day, I paid someone about 500 bucks for my website. I designed it myself for free. All right, so those are two different options. You can pay anywhere from 500 bucks to $5,000. I've paid upwards of $5,000 for websites because I needed them to have all the functions that I could possibly imagine, all right? Email, we talk about $5 a month per user. So if you're starting a business with three friends and you want all of them to have a professional email and access to your documents, sheets, and a storage drive, right? You're gonna pay $5 per each friend. It's gonna be $15 a month. I actually think Google Suite is $6 now but the details don't necessarily matter. I just want you to know that you can access all of these things from GoDaddy. So after this particular lesson or video, actually, um, there's gonna be about four or five more videos breaking down each and every part. I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna share my screen, I'm gonna give you a tutorial of my back end, what my hosting looks like, what my web design looks like, what my email looks like, okay? So you can have at least some sort of soft template that you can go off of. All right, so I want you guys to check that out. That's essentially your homework. It's gonna be some quizzes on those things. Make sure you watch um, intentionally. Make sure you take your notes, and I'll catch you guys over in lesson eight. Peace.